Greetings class, Chris Haskins here with the realestateroundup.com. Thank you for taking the time to join me in my mission statement. Uplift the financial literacy of my fellow mankind through real estate investing and entrepreneurship. Got a good one for you today. It's gonna to be part two. Part two of breaking down the numbers on a real estate deal. Billy, hopefully Billy will let us finish today. My Jack Russell Chihuahua, he's he's getting into something, but we're gonna pray that he lets us finish. Okay, so you talked, I listened. Our last episode of Breaking Down the Numbers, we went through a property that was falling down, literally. We had a family living in a house, house had full of mold. Half of the house was falling in. It actually wasn't even the house. And we're gonna to cut to that video shortly. But, oh yeah, before we get there, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Don't forget, we've got content for real estate investors content for anybody that's looking to get into the real estate business subscribe like the comment below like the contents below okay so let's break down these numbers you remember we went to the house i'm going to bring you up to speed how this episode ends it's going to be very interesting and it's going to keep you on the edge of your seat to the very end all right so we, we went to the property right we noticed before we got there see i got my line right here this is the data that we need to know before we get to the property. Okay, so our principal, what they owe. Principal is going to be 103. And I'm going to flash this on the screen so you will see it. All right, Billy, don't you be cutting up now. Our monthly payment was $909. And the arrears, the arrears, what they owe, all that crap that they didn't pay for the last... I don't know, six or seven months. Was, I'm rounding up with $6,700. And before I got to see this one, I wanted, I was thinking it would be a subject two, to where we could just come in and take over the payments, right? We have to bring it current, which means we would have to pay $6,700 plus, let's just round that up to another thousand. We've got $7,700 to bring it current, and then I would just take over this house and keep moving down the street. But the problem is on subject twos, we don't know the condition of the property. You can never believe the homeowner when they tell you what the condition of the property is, right? You just can't do that. So I drew my line here. This is the data that I, that I know, and I actually remember the ARV was about 130. And this property would rent for, the rents on this one will be about 1100. Maybe get twelve hundred on this one, so it was one or two hundred dollar cash flow. But that wasn't my goal. My goal was to take over the payments and get a large down payment because the sellers told me this was a five bedroom house. So we do not know before we, we went, before we go to the property, we don't know the condition, right? Oh yeah, all my peeps out there messing with me about my light switch. Bam, I'm in the building. <laughs> I'm in the building. They got me a light switch. Fifty cent. Fifty cent. All right. Condition, we don't know the condition before we get to the property, right? We got to know the condition in order to make this deal work. Can't believe sellers, can't believe sellers. All right, so let's cut to our previous video. <clears throat> if you wanna see the entire video, I just go back one. But I'm gonna give you real quick, one minute of the condition of the property. So let's cut to that. Oh man, you like a jungle back here. Okay, good Lord. Jungle sometimes makes me want to. <laughs> Did you ever live here? Man? Yes, I, I, I just came here. I was um, 14, 15. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I've been here since then. My father was in the military. Okay. He was in the Air Force for quite some time. Oh, yeah. And he retired here. Okay. Oh, yeah. This is from termite damage. The, the window that the window that's right here, they, they were brand new. This just happened like I want to say maybe around, around March. Around March on this side. It's still a while before we get there. Miss Mary, how long has this been happening? This bathroom, so we don't use the bathroom. bathroom. No, it's still, we still use it. Okay, you need it on for me, so you just start to assess it. So we got the corner here. So this is the back wall that's going outside. 
Oh, no, actually, another? there's a there's a family room back there. Okay, oh, I, gotcha. okay, I was just about to say, isn't it a deeper, further area? So it looks like right the, this is how it all had to be redone here. Did y'all block that off or something? Cool. Oh, that's the this this right. yeah. oh, So this okay, has okay. to be ripped out. All the that's what I was thinking about. The shower. The back there. Even deeper back there. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It goes we far have, back. We had some people work on it. They tore up the floor. All right. And left it that way. So I'm not sure. I actually looks take a look. Here you go. Be careful. Yeah, I'm gonna tap well before I go. I'm gonna be nervous about this one. Okay, I see you know, This ain't super bad. And then it goes further, you know. Around. Around, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a bigger, big area. Like yep. when you go through that back area. Gotcha. It's a big open area. I think, isn't there a chimney or something? Well, praise God, we got to come up there. Yeah. Praise God, they have this thing. It's uh, roped off. Or at least you have this so that moisture is not coming through. And just get it up and down there. Get the floor too. You can remember this one so we know what we gotta do. It's like a little one right there, a bigger one with a fireplace like right there. Yeah. Alright, so you got the condition. So we know now the condition is completely busted. Right? This house is completely busted. Nothing I can do. I don't even think I'm gonna be able to renovate this one because I don't want to sink a hundred thousand, hundred and ten, twenty when I can build a brand new house for 130, right? So this condition of the property, busted. It's done, can't do anything with it. Based on the footage you just saw. Now, the last thing I need to know is my seller's motivation. If you wanna check out her motivation, you will see that in the previous video as well. Her motivation is a 10. Remember in our training, we deal with people that are motivated from ones. Well, let me do the little, the little timeline. We got sellers with motivation from one to 10, right? That's the motivation that your seller could be in. I don't want you dealing with any ones through sixes. I want you dealing with sevens through tens only. I want the motivation of your sellers to be up here and higher, all right? So this the seller motivation here was a 10. So being that she had motivation, but I couldn't do this deal based on the condition of the property, we had to attack this one and just try to pick it up at the courthouse steps, all right? So this video here is gonna show you what happens at the courthouse steps when we go. What is the opening bid? How do the other buyers approach this, this auction? How does the trustee actually, actually conduct an auction? So you're training here. Quickly, I'm gonna bring you fast forward to the second half of how we actually ended up with the property that those people were living in, all right? So let's get out there to the courthouse steps. We're gonna, I'm gonna take you right to the foreclosure live and direct, right to the foreclosure auction, sucking you in, keeping you excited because real estate, you just don't know where it's gonna end up, right? You don't watch this channel because of me and my sexy smile, right? That's not why you're here. You wanna know how what real estate is gonna take you, where it's gonna take you. So let's go to the foreclosure auction. It's gonna be live, guys. You're gonna love it. Let's do this, let's roll. Hey, what's up? Chris Haskins with the real estate roundup.com. I'm, I'm at a foreclosure auction here at the courthouse. Ain't nobody here but me and the trustee. What up? So, I don't know if the big boys are going to come because I'm a little guy. And we don't know. You never know what the opening bid is going to be because they don't disclose that until the auction starts and it's not like one of those ones where they start high and come down and go low they're gonna start whatever the hell number they want so it's one lady here I just it's probably lonely coming out here too so this is quite cool we'll keep you posted on what happens it looks like somebody else has decided to show up today we got one other guy we'll see how this thing goes down and we'll talk to him maybe be a cash buyer we can wholesale something to him maybe in the future and we have started they got the she has started here. You see, she started talking low. It looks like the vultures have actually they shown up. They come out. These guys come at the last minute. I guess they probably wait in their car until the lady starts talking. Because I'm not that smooth yet. I like to be a little early. I just kind of the businessman in me likes coming early. We'll see what she says. Do what she's got to say. Okay, you're gonna see the people standing in front of the trustee there, and that trustee is actually a trustee employee. I don't know what they get paid, but they get paid to come out there and just read from a clipboard. That's all they get paid to do. They don't know any of the moving parts or the back office regarding 
valuations, doing BPOs, notes, deeds of trust, mortgages, none of that crap. All they do is get paid to come and read a piece of paper, right? So they don't know what's going on. So you'll see them taking the sign-in sheet, doing the proof of funds. And uh, in order for you to even bid, in order for you to even be at this auction to bid, you have to give them a proof of funds. In this case, I presented mine. I didn't have it on camera, but I just took cash because I knew I only wanted to spend twenty or 30000 So you see her with her clipboard there. You see everybody signing in. So she's just rolling. It's so cool. You just sit here and listen to the dog. In summary, the property is no one. being sold in as is condition without warranty of any kind. No one cares. Really. It's just talks. To the condition of the property and, any improvements there on, and the condition of the title. Finish talking. The property will be conveyed to the high bidder upon completion of the transaction by special warranty that can be developed in the city trustee. Nineteen thousand eight hundred dollars. And recorded in the clerk's office of the circuit court of the city of Portsmouth, Virginia, is entry number zero nine zero zero one four five four one. The undersigned trustee will sell a public auction on June thirteenth. 2018 at 11 a.m. in front of the building house in the city of Portsmouth, Okay, so we're right in the middle of an auction. You see how boring it is. You see everybody just hanging around, looking around. It's unbelievable how in this country people's lives and the fate of tenants are decided so quickly and easily how people can just come up and have a quick auction. They're going to decide where you're going to live the next day, right? So this foreclosure is going on, going on, and people walking by, they don't know what's going on. They don't know what's at stake for these tenants. Remember the tenants living in the property, they died of diabetes. They didn't have any money to even live. They didn't even have water nor sewer lines in this property. It was condemned. Very sad. It just always amazes me how banks can just play with this large amount of money. And it's the candidness that people carry when they're dealing with these long, these, this, these large debts. And you'll see how our trustee is just very nonchalantly just talking about selling somebody's house from them, taking their house, basically. Entrance facing Court Street, Portsmouth 707. I have an opening bid at the amount of $103,632.16. The opening bid is $100,000. Unbelievable. This property is probably be worth $10,000, maybe. <laughs> So we're not gonna have anywhere close to that hundred dollars. So glad I didn't do a title search. So glad I didn't do a title search on this one. Let's see if she changes it. Impossible. Impossible. Waste your money on these title searches and then you never know what's gonna happen. to be trying to sell these houses for a hundred thousand dollars it just makes no sense for you to even try to figure out or even try to make these numbers work yeah, opening bid a hundred thousand i mean well that tells me that you just can't trust this financial system this banking system is rigged no doubt they got a bpo yes the house may be allegedly two thousand square feet but a hundred thousand dollars I know the broker had to at least do a walk around on this one and see the mold damage and the devastation of this property. It's just a nightmare to think that somebody would try to sell it. I was willing to pay 10, 15, maybe. You saw the vultures there, nobody even bid on it. So, hence the problem with real estate and foreclosures. You just, you do title searches, you never know when or if you're gonna get the bid. <clears throat> You may not get the bid, but then you got $100 in the title search. So try to do a preliminary title search on your own. Before you come down here, try to hang with the big boys. Okay, so that was a sale in real estate. A foreclosure sale is considered a sale. I know sometimes you might see a property was sold for $300,000. That doesn't mean that it necessarily was sold on the market. That could be where the bank took it back, right? And that's, that's not a comp. That's not considered any true value. So you see our buyers walking away and they're done. They're moving on to the next thing, right? Now you ask, you ask, what is going to happen to that family, to that family that was living in the property? We did give them some recommendations of someone to talk to. However, <clears throat> the bank, once they take it back, they can either make a deal and see if the tenants want to pay them rent 
or they will try to evict them. What I've usually seen, they will evict them. The bank will put them on the street, you know? So that's, that's gonna be the bank's issue to deal with the occupants. And you remember they were there, they didn't have a lot of money. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a challenging one because the judge might look at them and say, hey, they don't have anywhere to go. So we need you to work out a deal with these people. You never know. Okay guys, it's Chris Haskins over and out. Make sure you take a few minutes to subscribe to my channel, like the content below, share it with anybody that's interested in getting into the real estate business or being an entrepreneur. Show them how things get down, how we do business, how you can buy your next house. I could have bought this house, but it was just overpriced, way overpriced. And these are the numbers here, they don't lie. So I'll see you at our next video. Chris Haskins, over and out, peace.